parables. Imagine for a moment that you could step into a story so vivid, so real that it becomes a blueprint for your own transformation. This is the essence of parable visualization. It's a revolutionary approach that combines the ancient wisdom of parables with the modern understanding of visualization techniques. Parable visualization is not just about passive listening or reading. It's an active immersive experience where you become the protagonist in a carefully crafted story. These are not mere flights of fancy, but powerful metaphors designed to rewire your subconscious mind, allowing you to manifest your deepest desires and overcome your most daunting challenges. Since the dawn of humanity, stories have been our teachers, our guides, and our catalysts for change. They have the unique ability to bypass our logical defenses and speak directly to our hearts and souls. When we engage with a story, we're not just processing information, we're feeling, experiencing, and living it. This episode harnesses that power, offering you a set of parables that are more than just tales. They are keys to unlock your potential. Through these stories, you'll discover new perspectives, challenge limiting beliefs, and open doors to possibilities you never imagined existed. At its core, a parable is a succinct, allegorical story designed to illustrate or teach a moral, spiritual, or practical lesson. But parables are far more than mere instructional tools. They are mirrors reflecting the complexities of human nature and existence. There are many key characteristics of parables, including simplicity in the narrative. Parables often use everyday settings and characters, making them accessible to a wider audience. They have a depth of meaning, universal themes, open-ended in nature, and memorable imagery with vivid metaphors and symbols that stick in the mind long after the story is told. Parables often conclude without explicit explanations, inviting you to ponder and interpret. And despite their surface simplicity, they contain layers of significance that reveal themselves upon reflection. The use of parables as a teaching tool spans millennia and crosses cultural divides. You find it in ancient Eastern traditions in India, the Buddha frequently used parables to convey complex philosophical concepts. The Chitaka tales, stories of the Buddha's past lives are rich with parables teaching moral and spiritual lessons. Parables of Jesus in the New Testament are perhaps the most widely known in Western culture. However, Jewish tradition also has a rich history of parables found in the Midrash and Talmud. Many African cultures have long used parables in their oral storytelling traditions, often featuring animals as representations of human traits and behaviors. Confucius and Taoist masters frequently employed parables to illustrate their teachings as seen in the works like the Zhuangzi. Even in contemporary times, authors like Jorge Luis Borges and Calvino have used parable-like stories to explore complex ideas. Every story is a parable on some level, and oftentimes we learn more from watching movies and hearing stories than having a teacher tell us. They're enduringly popular. They transport us narratively and engage our natural affinity for stories, transporting us into a narrative world. This immersion enhances our emotional engagement and receptivity to the message. By presenting ideas through metaphor, parables activate multiple areas of the brain simultaneously, creating a richer, more enduring neural connection. And the vivid imagery and emotional resonance of parables makes them more memorable than abstract concepts or dry facts. The indirect nature of parables allows them to sidestep our psychological defenses, making us more open to new ideas or perspectives and interpreting parables exercises our ability to think flexibly and see connections between seemingly unrelated concepts. Parables often evoke emotional responses, which neurological research has shown to be the crucial key in decision-making and behavioral change. And the open-ended nature of parables invites personal interpretation, allowing individuals to find meaning relevant to their own lives. 
Understanding these psychological mechanisms is key to harnessing the full power of parable visualization. As we proceed, keep in mind that we're not just reading stories. You're engaging with a tool that has been shaping human thought and behavior for thousands of years. The best example I can give is how would aliens that have functional faster than light travel and highly functioning technologies, as you see like in Star Trek, explain to a group of villagers that have never seen a battery or electricity what the internet is. There are some things that are difficult to explain literally. And so sometimes you have to give examples that people can engage with so they understand concepts. And that's what Jesus was doing. He had a much more in-depth knowledge of course, but he had to teach these things to people in many cases that had never gone to school, that were peasants, that didn't have a lifetime of learning behind them. And that is the power of this. And you can see it with good speakers, even powerful dictators will use metaphors in their language as a form of manipulation. Parables are not just heard or read, they're experienced. They ignite the theater of the mind. As we picture the characters and settings, we become active participants in the story. By presenting alternate realities, parables help us envision new potentials in our lives. When we can vividly imagine new possibilities, we're more likely to pursue them. Parables slip past our defenses by not directly challenging beliefs they avoid triggering immediate resistance we lower our guards when we're engrossed in a narrative becoming more receptive to new ideas and by focusing on common human experiences these parables create a sense of shared understanding rather than confrontation the gentle approach allows parables to plant seeds of change in even the most resistant minds parables don't just speak to our intellect they resonate with our hearts we form emotional bonds with the characters, feeling their joys and sorrows. Parables often trigger recollections of our own experiences, deepening their impact. And stirring universal emotions is part of what's key. They tap into shared human feelings and create a sense of connection and understanding. They facilitate insights and aha moments. The ambiguity in a parable allows each person to find meaning relevant to their own life. Often the full impact of the parable unfolds over time, leading to sudden insights, and they can bring subconscious knowledge into conscious awareness. By presenting familiar themes in new contexts, parables help us recognize patterns in our own lives. And they offer new viewpoints, leading to paradigm-shifting realizations. These aha moments are where the real magic of parables happen. They're the points where abstract understanding transforms into personal truth catalyzing genuine change in our thoughts, feelings, and actions. Few figures wielded the power of parables as masterfully as Jesus of Nazareth. His use of his simple yet profound stories shaped Western thought and culture for millennia. Let's examine Jesus' approach as a case study in the art of parabolic teaching. Jesus' teaching style was revolutionary for his time and continues to be studied for its effectiveness. He used everyday scenarios and common objects like seeds, coins, and sheep to illustrate profound spiritual truths, making his teachings accessible to all. His parables often challenge societal norms and religious assumptions, prompting listeners to question their beliefs. And they operated on multiple levels, offering immediate lessons and deeper truths for those willing to reflect further. And he frequently employed stark contrasts such as light and dark, lost and found, wise and foolish to highlight key points and many of his parables end with questions or ambiguous conclusions to understand the jesus technique let's examine two of his most famous parables the good samaritan and the prodigal son the good samaritan found in luke 10 25 through 37 was told in response to the question who is my neighbor in this parable a man is robbed and left for dead religious leaders pass by but a samaritan a despised outsider helps him jesus subverts expectations to making the villain, the hero, and uses contrast between the actions of religious leaders and the Samaritan. 
The parable ends with a question forcing the listener to draw their own conclusions. This story challenges notions of tribalism and redefines neighbor to include all humanity. The prodigal son found in Luke 15, 11, illustrates God's forgiveness. In this story, a son demands his inheritance, wastes it, then returns home in shame. His father welcomes him joyfully, angering the older, faithful son. Jesus uses family dynamics to illustrate divine love and employs multiple perspectives to explore different aspects of forgiveness and resentment. The open ending invites listeners to ponder their own response. This offers a radical view of unconditional love and forgiveness, challenging both religious and societal norms. And then the more I think about the prodigal son, it's a story of our soul, and it has levels that go deeply over time. So understand what we're dealing with, with these short little stories, are powerful technologies. Metaphors serve as cognitive scaffolds, allowing us to grasp complex or abstract ideas by relating to them with familiar concepts. This process facilitates learning and problem solving by creating new neural pathways. So listen to the following parables and simply visualize them. Hear the story as you would hear any story and take what lessons that you can hear from them. I can give you my own interpretations, but oftentimes you'll look back on it and find more. The Orchard of Infinite Fruits. In a distant land, there lived a young woman named Maya, who had always dreamed of owning her own orchard. Despite her passion and hard work, she struggled to make ends meet, believing that abundance was something reserved for others, not for her. One day, while wandering through the forest, Maya stumbled upon a hidden gate overgrown with vines. Curiosity peaked. She pushed it open and stepped into a world she had never imagined. Before her stretched an orchard, Unlike any she had ever seen, trees of every kind grew side by side, their branches heavy with fruits of all colors, shapes, and sizes. Some she recognized, others were completely foreign to her. As Maya wandered through this magical orchard, she noticed an old gardener tending to the trees. His eyes twinkled with wisdom as he greeted her. Welcome to the orchard of infinite fruits, he said. Here, abundance knows no bounds. Maya's eyes widened, but how is this possible? She asked. In my world, orchards struggle and fruits are scarce. The old gardener smiled and handed her a golden seed. The secret lies not in the soil or the rain, but in your belief, he explained. Each tree here began as a seed of thought, nurtured by unwavering faith in abundance. He guided Maya to an empty patch of earth. Plant your seed here, he instructed, and water it with your own belief in limitless possibility. Skeptical but intrigued, Maya did as she was told. To her amazement, a sprout emerged almost immediately, growing rapidly before her eyes. Within moments, it had become a mature tree, its branches laden with golden fruits she had never seen before. But how will I harvest all of this? Maya asked, overwhelmed by the bounty before her. The gardener chuckled. The beauty of the orchard of infinite fruits is that the more you pick, the more grows in its place. Abundance multiplies when shared. As if to demonstrate, he plucked a fruit and handed it to Maya. The moment he did, two more grew in its place. Maya's eyes filled with wonder as she finally understood. Remember, the gardener said, this orchard exists not just here, but within you. Your mind is the soil, your thoughts are the seeds, and your belief is the water that brings forth abundance. Maya left the orchard that day with a transformed perspective. She returned to her world, carrying the golden seed of abundance in her heart. And from that day forward, she approached her own orchard with a renewed faith and vision. To her delight, she found the more she believed in abundance, the more it manifested in her life. Her orchard flourished beyond her wildest dreams, not just with fruits, but with joy, inspiration, and opportunities. And like the old gardener had taught her, the more she shared her abundance, the more it grew. Maya had discovered the true secret of the orchard of infinite fruits, that abundance is a state of mind, ever growing and limitless when rooted in unshakable belief and nurtured by the joy of sharing. The Parable of the Bottomless Well 
In a small village nestled in a barren valley, there lived a man named Eli. The village had long suffered from drought, and its inhabitants lived in constant fear of scarcity. Water was rationed, and the villagers guarded their meager supplies jealously. Eli, however, was different. Despite the harsh conditions, he always seemed to have enough water for himself and to share with others. The villagers whispered and wondered about his secret, some even accusing him of hoarding or stealing. One scorching day, a young girl named Zara, curious about Eli's abundance, followed him to the outskirts of the village. There, hidden behind a cluster of rocks, she saw Eli approach an old, unremarkable well. To her amazement, he lowered his bucket without rope, and it disappeared into the darkness. When Eli pulled the bucket up, it was brimming with clear, cool water. He noticed Zara watching and beckoned her over with a warm smile. Come, child, he said. Would you like to draw some water? Zara approached cautiously, but there's no rope, she observed. How can we reach the water? Eli's eyes twinkled. This is no ordinary well, he explained. It's the well of infinite abundance. Its water can only be drawn by those who truly believe in its bottomless nature. Skeptical but intrigued, Zara appeared into the well. The darkness seemed to go on forever. What if it runs dry, she asked, voicing the fear that plagued her village. Eli shook his head gently. That's the beauty of it, Zara. The more you draw from it, believing in its endless supply, the more it gives. But those who approach it with fear and doubt find only an empty bucket. He guided Zara's hands to the bucket. Now close your eyes and imagine the well filled to the brim with cool, life-giving water. Believe in its abundance, with all your heart as you lower the bucket. Zara did as she was told, her young mind open to the possibility. To her astonishment, when she pulled up the bucket, it was full of water so pure it sparkled in the sunlight. Why keep this a secret, Zara asked, her eyes with, wide with wonder. Eli smiled sadly. I've tried to share it, but most cannot see past their fears. They come with doubt in their hearts and leave with empty buckets, convinced the well is dry. Understanding dawned on Zara's face. The well isn't about water, is it? She asked. You're right. This well represents the abundance of the universe, be it water, love, opportunities, or joy. It's always there, bottomless and giving. But we can only access it when we approach life with a belief in abundance rather than a fear of scarcity. From that day on, Zara became Eli's apprentice. Together they worked to change the village's mindset, teaching others to approach the well and life with faith in abundance. Slowly but surely the village transformed as more people learned to draw from the bottomless well, not just water, but kindness, creativity, and prosperity began to flow freely. The once barren valley bloomed into an oasis of abundance, a testament to the power of belief and the endless generosity of the universe to those who approach it with open hearts and minds. And so the parable of the bottomless well reminds us that true abundance is not about what we possess, but our perspective. When we believe in the limitless nature of the universe's gifts, we open ourselves to receive them in abundance. parable of the multiplying coins. In a bustling marketplace of an ancient city, there lived a merchant named Adira. Unlike her fellow traders who constantly fretted over their profits and losses, Adira always wore a serene smile. Her booth, though small, never seemed to run out of goods, and her generosity was known throughout the market. One day, a young apprentice named Tamir approached Adira, puzzled by her perpetual abundance. How do you always have enough to give when others struggle to keep their shelves stocked? He asked. Adira's eyes twinkled as she reached into her pocket and pulled out a single ordinary looking coin. The secret, young Tamir, lies in how much you have but in how much you use what you have, she said. He placed the coin in Tamir's palm. Watch closely, she instructed. Adira then took the coin back and with a graceful motion flipped it into a beggar's bowl nearby. To Tamir's astonishment, as the coin clinked into the bowl, two identical coins appeared in Adira's hand. But how? Tamir gasped, her eyes wide with wonder. Adira smiled warmly. These are the coins of benevolent abundance, she explained. They multiply not through hoarding, but through giving. The more you share, the more you receive. Intrigued, 
Tamir asked to try. Adira handed him one of the coins. Remember, she cautioned, the magic lies not in the coin itself, but in the spirit of genuine giving. Tamir spotted a child eyeing some fruit he couldn't afford. With only a moment's hesitation, he used the coin to buy the fruit for the child. As he handed over the coin, he felt a weight in his pocket. Reaching in, he found two coins were there, had been none before. Excited by his discovery, Tamir spent the day using the multiplying coins to help others, buying medicine for the sick, food for the hungry, and supplies for struggling artisans. With each act of kindness, the coins doubled. As the sun began to set, Tamir returned to Adira, his pockets heavy with coins. This is incredible. With these coins, one could amass a fortune. Adira's expression grew serious. Ah, but that's where many lose their way, she said. Watch what happens when you try to keep the coins for yourself. She took a coin and placed it in a small box, closing the lid. When she opened it again, the coin had vanished. You see, the coins of benevolent abundance are not meant for personal gain. They are a lesson in the flow of true wealth. When we give with an open heart, the universe responds in kind. When we try to hoard or keep for ourselves, the flow stops. Tamir nodded, understanding, dawning in his eyes. So the real magic isn't in the coins at all, is it? Adira beamed at her young apprentice. Exactly. Coins are merely a symbol. The true magic lies in the act of giving itself. Every kind deed of every generous action sets in motion a cycle of abundance that goes far beyond material wealth. From that day forward, Tamir looked at the world differently. He realized that true abundance wasn't about accumulating wealth, but about cultivating a generous spirit and participating in the grand cycle of giving and receiving. As he integrated this wisdom into his life, Tamir found that not only did his business prosper, but his life became rich in ways he had never imagined, filled with deep relationships, meaningful experiences, and a sense of purpose. The parable of the multiplying coins teaches us that abundance is not a finite resource to be hoarded, but a flowing river that grows stronger the more we allow it to pass through us to others. In giving, we don't lose. We multiply our blessings and become channels for the universe's infinite abundance. Parables of Healing The River of Renewal In a valley shadowed by towering mountains where flowed a river unlike any other. Its water shimmered with an otherworldly delight, and tales of its healing properties had spread far and wide. Yet reaching the river was no easy feat, for the path was treacherous and few had the courage to attempt the journey. Among those who dwelled in the nearby village was a woman named Lyra. For years, she had been plagued by a mysterious illness that left her weak and in constant pain. Doctors were baffled and traditional remedies offered no relief. Despite for a cure, she decided to seek out the fabled river of renewal. As she embarked on her journey, she encountered three challenges, each representing a different aspect of her healing process. The first was a dense, thorny forest. As she carefully made her way through the thorns, they tore at her clothes and skin. She realized that these thorns symbolized the pain and trauma she had been clinging to. With each step, she consciously let go of old hurts, forgiving those who had wronged her and releasing the burden of resentment she had carried for so long. The second challenge was a vast, barren desert. The scorching sun and lack of water tested her resolve. She understood that this desert represented the doubts and fears that held her back from true healing. As she crossed the shifting sand, she confronted each fear, replacing them with a hope and self-belief. The final obstacle was a sheer cliff face. As Lyra began to climb, she felt her strength waning. This cliff, she realized, represented the final push towards healing. The willingness to embrace change and leave behind the familiar, even if painful, with each handhold, she reaffirmed her commitment to her new and healthier self. At last, exhausted but triumphant, she reached the summit. There, glittering before her, flowed the river of renewal. Its waters sang of melody, of healing and hope. Without hesitation, she waded in. As the cool waters enveloped her, she felt a profound transformation. It wasn't just her physical ailments, that were being washed away, but also the emotional and spiritual burden she had carried for so long. She emerged from the river feeling lighter, stronger, and truly alive for the first time in years. But the river had one final lesson to impart. As Lyra stood on the bank, marveling at her restoration, 
she noticed her reflection in the water. To her amazement, she saw not just herself, but glimpses of all those still suffering in her village. In that moment, Lyra understood the true nature of healing. It wasn't something to be hoarded or kept to oneself, but a gift to be shared. She realized that her journey wasn't just for her own healing, but to bring hope and renewal to others. Filled with purpose, Lyra began the journey back to her village. Though she couldn't bring the river's waters with her, she carried its essence in her renewed spirit and the wisdom she had gained. She understood now that true healing comes not just from external sources, but from the inner journey of confronting your pains, fears, and limitations. Back in her village, she became a beacon of hope and healing. She shared her story and the lessons of the river, helping others to find their own paths to renewal. Through her example, many found the courage to confront their own thorny forests, barren deserts, and steep cliffs. Now this parable teaches us that healing is a holistic journey encompassing body, mind, and spirit. It reminds you that while the path to healing may be challenging, the transformation it brings is worth every step. Most importantly, it shows us that true healing isn't just a personal victory, but a light you can share to illuminate the paths of others. The Parable of the Lighthouse and the Storm On a rocky coastline battered by relentless waves stood a majestic lighthouse. For generations, it had guided ships safely to harbor, its unwavering light a beacon of hope in the darkest of nights. The lighthouse keeper was an old man who had tended the light for more years than anyone could remember. One fateful night, the storm of unprecedented fury descended upon the coast. The wind howled like a thousand angry spirits. Waves crashed against the rocks with such force that the very foundations of the earth seemed to tremble. In the village below, people huddled in their homes, fear gripping their hearts. As the storm raged, a small fishing boat struggled against the tempest. The captain, a young woman, fought desperately to keep her vessel from being dashed against the jagged rocks. Her crew clung to whatever they could, their faces etched with terror. In the lighthouse, the lighthouse keeper knew that light was more crucial than ever before, but as he climbed the winding stairs to check on the great lamp, disaster struck. A powerful gust of wind shattered the glass dome, protecting the light, extinguishing the flame that had burned for so long. His heart sank as he realized the peril this posed to any ships caught in the storm. He tried to relight the lamp, but the howling wind snuffed out every match in that moment of despair closed his eyes and took a deep breath. He remembered the words his mentor had told him long ago. The strongest light comes from within. With a renewed determination, he began to sing. It was an old song, one that had been passed down through generations of lighthouse keepers. As his voice rose above the storm, something extraordinary happened. The lighthouse itself began to glow softly, at first then with increasing brightness. The light emanated not from the lamp, but from the very stones of the tower pulsing in rhythm with the lightkeeper's song. Out in the churning sea, the captain and her crew saw the pulsing light. It seemed to speak directly to their hearts, filling them with a sense of peace and hope. Guided by this miraculous beacon, the captain skillfully steered her boat away from the treacherous rocks and towards the safety of the harbor. And as the boat approached the shore, the storm began to abate. The villagers, drawn by the strange pulsing light, emerged from their homes to witness the fishing boat's safe return. They watched in awe as the captain and her crew disembarked, shaken but alive. When asked of how they had been saved, the villagers pointed to the lighthouse and the old keeper, who was now making his way down to the shore. His eyes shone with a light that matched the glow of the lighthouse behind him. The light that saved you, he explained, was not just the light of the lighthouse, but the light of hope and resilience that exists within all of us. In your darkest moments, when all seems lost, we have the power to become the beacon for others. The villagers gathered around, each person telling the truth of his words resonating with them. They realized their healing and hope often had come not from external sources, but from the strength they found within themselves and the connections they forged with others. This parable 
teaches us the true healing and resilience come from within. It reminds you that even in the darkest hours, you have the power to light the way for ourselves and others. Most importantly, it shows that when we connect with our inner strength and with each other, we can weather any storm and guide one another to safe harbors. The Parable of the Phoenix's Rebirth In a hidden valley nestled between misty mountains, there lived a community known for its healers. Among them was a young woman named Arya, whose gift for healing was unmatched, yet despite her ability to cure others, she carried a deep wound within her own heart, a painful past she couldn't seem to overcome. One day an elder of the community approached her. Your healing touch is remarkable, he said, but to reach your full potential you must seek out the phoenix. Intrigued and desperate for her own healing, Arya embarked on a journey to find the mythical bird. Her path led her through dense forests, across scorching deserts, and up treacherous mountain passes. Each step of the journey challenged her, forcing her to confront the pain she had long buried. After many days of travel, she reached a desolate plateau. There, perched atop a withered tree, sat a bird unlike any she had ever seen. Its feathers, once vibrant, were now dull and lifeless. This, Arya realized, was the phoenix, but not as the legends had described it. As she approached, the phoenix spoke, its voice a whisper of wind through the ashes. You seek healing, young healer, but tell me, what do you see when you look at me? She hesitated, then answered honestly, I see pain, weariness, a fire that has almost gone out. Phoenix nodded solemnly. Just as you see in me, so too is the reflection of your own soul. We are not so different, you and I. With those words, the phoenix burst into flames. Arya watched in awe as the magnificent bird was consumed by fire, reduced to nothing but a pile of ashes. In that moment, she understood true healing often requires a complete transformation, a willingness to let go of everything we once were. As Arya stood before the ashes, feeling the weight of her own pain, a small spark ignited the pile. Slowly a new phoenix emerged, its feathers a brilliant array of reds, golds, and purples. It spread its wings, and as it did, Arya felt a warmth spreading throughout her own body. The reborn phoenix turned its gaze to Arya. The secret of healing, it said, lies not in avoiding the fire, but in embracing it. To heal, we must be willing to burn away that which no longer serves us to rise anew from our own ashes. Understanding dawned on Arya. She realized that she had been clinging to her past pain, allowing it to define her. With tears streaming down her face, she opened her heart, allowing the phoenix's fire to burn away her old wounds and fears. As the flames of transformation engulfed her, she felt no pain, only a profound sense of release. When the fire subsided, she stood tall, feeling lighter and more whole than she ever had before. The phoenix spoke once more. Remember, young healer, that rebirth is not a one-time event. Life will present many fires, many opportunities for renewal. Embrace them, for in each death there is the seed of new life. Arya returned to her community transformed. Her healing abilities had grown exponentially, for now she understood. that true healing comes not from avoiding pain, but from moving through it. She taught others the wisdom of the phoenix showing them how to embrace their own fires of transformation. From that day forward, Arya's life became a continuous cycle of growth and renewal. She faced each challenge not with fear, but with the knowledge that it held the potential for rebirth. And in her darkest moments, she would remember the phoenix and find the courage to rise once more from the ashes. The parable of the phoenix's rebirth teaches us that healing often requires a willingness to let go of our old selves. It reminds us that pain and challenges are not obstacles to our growth, but catalysts for transformation. Most importantly, it shows us that within each of us lies the power to rise anew, no matter how many times life reduces us to ashes. The Parable of the Mountain Climber's Journey In a village nested at the foot of a towering mountain, there lived a young woman. From childhood, she had dreamed of reaching the mountain's peak, a feat no one in her village had ever accomplished. Many had tried, but all had returned defeated, 
speaking of insurmountable obstacles and treacherous paths. Undeterred by the tales of failure, she decided to embark on the climb. The night before her journey, an old sage visited her. The path to the summit is not just a physical journey, he said, handing her a small ornate box. Open this only when you feel you can go no further. As she began her ascent, the path seemed clear and her spirits were high, but soon she encountered her first challenge. A dense forest with trees so tightly packed with no path was visible. Many before her had turned back here, but she remembered the sage's words. She realized that success often requires forging your own path with determination. She navigated through the forest, creating her own way forward. Emerging from the forest, she faced a steep, rocky cliff. As she climbed, loose rocks gave way under her feet, and she found herself slipping backward as often as she moved forward. Exhausted and discouraged, she remembered the box, but looking up at the distance still to go, she found a renewed sense of purpose. Progress isn't always visible, she reminded herself, but every step, even the backward ones, makes me stronger. Higher up the mountain, she encountered a narrow ledge with howling winds threatening to push her off. Fear gripped her heart, and for the first time she considered turning back. It was then that she opened the box, and inside she found a mirror and a note that read, The key to overcoming fear lies within. As Zara looked at her reflection, she saw not just herself, but all those in her village who believed in her. She realized that success is not a solitary journey, but one supported by the faith of others and belief in yourself. With renewed courage, she pressed on. The air grew thin, and each step became a monumental effort. And doubt crept in as the summit seemed to remain ever out of reach. Once again, she looked in the mirror. This time she saw herself not as she was, but as she could be. Standing triumphant at the peak, she understood that success requires not just physical stamina, but the mental fortitude to envision your goal even when it seems impossible. Finally, after days of climbing, she reached the summit. The view was breathtaking, the entire world spread out before her. But she realized that the real reward wasn't just the view, but the person she had become on the journey. Each obstacle had taught her valuable lessons about perseverance, innovation, self-belief, and vision. As she made her way back to the village, she carried not just the pride of reaching the summit, but the wisdom gained from every step of the climb. She understood that true success is not just about reaching the destination, but about who you become along the way. In the years that followed, she became a guide and mentor, helping others in their own climbs, both literal and metaphorical. She taught them that the mountain of success is not conquered in a single bound, but in a series of small steps, each one a victory in itself. The parable of the mountain climber's journey teaches us that success is a personal journey, filled with obstacles that challenge us to grow. It reminds us that the path to our goals is rarely straight or easy, but it's in overcoming these challenges that we find our true strength. Most importantly, it shows us that with perseverance, self-belief, and the right mindset, we can achieve what others deem impossible, and in doing so, inspire others to reach for their own summits. The Parable of the Alchemist's Secret in a bustling medieval city, there lived an alchemist. Unlike her peers who sought to turn lead into gold, this alchemist was obsessed with discovering the secret of true success. She spent years experimenting, studying ancient texts, and consulting with sages from distant lands. One day a mysterious traveler arrived at her doorstep. His eyes gleamed with wisdom as he said, I hear you seek the secret of success. Are you prepared to learn it? even if it challenges everything you believe. Intrigued, she invited him in. The traveler produced three vials, one filled with a clear liquid, one with a red powder, and the third with a shimmering golden dust. These, he explained, are the components of success, but beware, for their true nature may surprise you. He instructed the alchemist to mix the contents in a specific order over three days. On the first day, she added the clear liquid to her alchemical crucible. To her amazement, it transformed into pure crystalline water. This represents clarity, the traveler explained. True success begins with a clear vision of what you wish to achieve. On the second day, the alchemist added the red powder. The mixture bubbled and steamed, generating intense heat. This is passion, said the traveler. Without the fire of dedication and enthusiasm, even the clearest vision remains unfulfilled. On the final day, with trembling hands, 
The alchemist sprinkled in the golden dust. Instead of turning the mixture to gold as she expected, it caused the contents to swirl and form a perfect mirror. Traveler smiled. And this, dear alchemist, is reflection. Success is not just about looking forward, but also about looking within, looking from your journey and constantly refining your approach. As the alchemist stared at her reflection, seeing not just herself, but all the possibilities that lay before her, she realized that success was not a destination, but a continuous process of growth and self-discovery. But how do I use this knowledge? The alchemist asked. The traveler replied, apply these principles to your life and work. Start each endeavor with clarity of purpose, fuel your actions with passion, and always take time to reflect, learn, and adjust your course. As the traveler turned to leave, the alchemist called out, wait, I don't even know your name. He smiled mysteriously. Names are not important. What matters is that you've discovered the alchemist's true secret, that the most valuable transformation is not of lead into gold, but of oneself. In the years that followed, the alchemist applied these principles to her work and life. She set clear goals, pursued them with fervor, and regularly took time to reflect and learn from her experiences. Her successes grew not just in her alchemical pursuits, but in all aspects of her life. Word of wisdom spread. Soon people from far and wide sought her counsel. To each, she taught the three principles, clarity, passion, and reflection. She showed them the true alchemy wasn't about transmuting metals, but about transmuting oneself and one's circumstances. The parable of the alchemist's secret teaches us that success is not an external achievement, but an internal transformation. It reminds us that clear vision, passionate dedication, and thoughtful reflection are the true components of lasting success. Most importantly, it shows us the greatest alchemy of all is the power we have to transform ourselves and in doing so, transmit the very world around us. The Parable of the Lion's Roar In the vast savannas of Africa, there lived a young lion named Kido. Unlike the other lions in his pride, Kido had never roared. He would open his mouth, but only a small squeak would emerge. The other lions teased him mercilessly calling him Silent Keto and excluding him from hunts and important gatherings. Ashamed and feeling powerless, Keto often wandered alone far from the pride. On one such solitary journey, he encountered an old battle-scarred lion resting beneath an acacia tree. The old lion's presence was commanding and his eyes held wisdom that spoke of countless seasons. Why do you wander alone, young one? The old lion asked. Kido hesitant at first shared his story of speechlessness and shame. The old lion listened intently, then spoke. Your roar, young Kido, is not in your throat, but in your heart. True power comes not from the loudness of your voice, but from the strength of your spirit. Intrigued, Kido asked the old lion to teach him. For days they worked together, not on producing sound, but on building inner strength. The old lion taught Kido to stand tall, to move with purpose, and to look at the world not with fear but with confidence your power the old lion said comes from knowing who you are and what you stand for it comes from compassion for others and the courage to act when action is needed as kaido's confidence grew so did his presence animals began to take notice of him respecting him not for his voice but for his demeanor he started to lead in his own quiet way resolving conflicts without violence and finding innovative ways to help the pride. One fateful day, the pride was threatened by a group of hyenas. The other lions roared and swiped at the air, but the hyenas, sensing their fear, were undeterred. Ito stepped forward, his body language exuding calm strength. He looked the lead hyena directly in the eyes, unwavering. In that moment, something extraordinary happened. From deep within Kido, a roar emerged. Not just a sound, but a powerful expression of his inner strength and newfound confidence. It resonated across the savannah, causing even the trees to tremble. The hyenas, recognizing true power, retreated without a fight. The pride stood in awe, realizing that Kido's power had always been present, just expressed differently. From that day forward, Kido became a respected leader, known not for the frequency of his roars, but for the weight they carried when he chose to use them. 
As seasons passed, Kaido taught the younger lions the lesson he had learned that true power comes from within, from knowing oneself and standing firm in one's principles. He showed them that leadership isn't about being the loudest, but about having the strength to stand up for what's right, the wisdom to know when to act, and the compassion to care for others. The parable of the lion's roar teaches us that true power is not about outward displays or dominance over others. It reminds us that real strength comes from inner confidence, integrity, and the courage to be true to oneself. Most importantly, it shows us that our unique expression of power can be just as impactful, if not more so, than conforming to others' expectations and embracing our authentic selves and leading with principle and compassion. We unlock a power far greater than any roar, the power to inspire, influence, and create a positive change in the world around us. The Parable of the Wizard's Wand In a realm where magic flowed like rivers and dreams took flight on the wings of possibility, there lived a young apprentice. She studied under the tutelage of Zephyr, a wizard renowned throughout the land for his extraordinary feats of magic. She was earnest in her studies, yet she always felt the true power eluded her. One day, Zephyr announced that he would be gifting her her very own wand, a rite of passage, for every young wizard. Her heart soared with excitement, imagining a wand adorned with precious gems and intricate carvings capable of bending reality to her will. When the day arrived, Zephyr presented her with a simple unadorned stick. Disappointment clouded her face as she took the humble wand in her hands. Master, she said, trying to hide her dismay. How can I perform great magic with such a simple tool? Zephyr's eyes twinkled with ancient wisdom as he replied, the true power of a wizard lies not in their wand, but in the mind and in the heart. This wand is but a channel for the magic that already exists within you. Unconvinced, she spent days trying to coax spectacular magic from her plain wand, but to no avail. Frustrated, she returned to Zephyr, ready to give up her dreams of becoming a powerful wizard. Zephyr listened patiently to her complaints, then said, Come with me. He led her to a mirror unlike any Mir Arya had ever seen before. Its surface rippled like water, reflecting not just appearances, but the very essence of those who gazed into it. Look closely, Zephyr instructed. As she peered into the mirror, she saw not her physical reflection, but a radiant being of pure energy and potential. Streams of magic flowed through and around her, connecting her to the very fabric of the universe. This is your true self, Zephyr explained. The power you seek is not in any wand but in recognizing and embracing the magic that is your birthright. Understanding dawned in her eyes as she realized she had been searching outside herself for something that had been within her all along. From that day forward, she approached her magic differently. Instead of trying to force power through her wand, she learned to connect with the wellspring of magic within herself. She discovered that her wand, simple as it was, served as a perfect conduit for her innate abilities. As her understanding grew, so did her power. She performed feats of magic that astonished even the most seasoned wizards. Yet the greatest transformation was not in her magical abilities, but in her perception of herself and the world around her. The parable of the wizard's wand teaches us that true power does not come from external sources or impressive tools, but from recognizing and nurturing our own inner potential. It reminds us that we often seek outside ourselves for strength that already exists within. I have many more parables that I could read. But I think that's a good start and good for this episode. Please do me a favor and share a parable in the comments. And I may have a future episode where I can read your parables that you're sharing. Understand that these are amazing technologies to improve our consciousness that allow us to learn in different ways. Using parables is more than just a technique. It's a gateway to a richer, more insightful way of visualizing and living ultimately. As you continue to engage with these stories, Visualize their teachings and apply their wisdom. You're not just changing yourself. You're contributing to the collective wisdom and the growth of those around you. Remember, the truth of these parables always comes from within you. It's a catalyst to awaken a truth that's already within you. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.